welcome Gideon Rose. Thank you very much. <clears throat> New Yorkers and Americans in general are really, they don't realize how spoiled they are when it comes to their cosmopolitan uh, foreign context. Uh, other countries take diplomacy and foreign affairs extremely seriously. And they take the United States extremely seriously, even when we don't deserve to be taken so seriously. And they tend to send their best and brightest to the United States when it comes to foreign affairs. And so we don't necessarily realize that because we see these consul generals and we see these ambassadors and we see these UN ambassadors and sometimes we see people who are all three and we think, oh, here's another diplomat in New York. And we don't fully appreciate that these men and women are often the absolute cream of their country's public services. And those of us who have the privilege of actually dealing with them in various contexts do recognize that and do appreciate that and are often blown away by their, their quality uh, and their service. And Francois is a perfect example of that. Uh, and he is not just carrying on an amazing legacy of French representation in the United States and in the international community, but uh, is a, a paragon uh, of that. And we are lucky uh, to have had him in New York. We are lucky to have had him in Washington. And we are extremely lucky to have had him in New York for his next season as well. So thank you very much, Francois, for all you do. I'd like to invite our panelists to, uh, to come up uh, now. We have a great panel. Um, we, uh, we have <coughs> uh, Ken Edelman, uh, Bob Hormatz, Paula Dobriansky, uh, Walter Russell Mead, and Frank Wisner. Uh, you can take your seats at your appropriate place. I don't think, well, oh, there's Walter, okay. Um, so uh, each of these men and women uh, could A, talk for an hour, B, be introduced for an hour. Uh, and uh, yet we don't, that, that would over, that would be like the producers. We would oversell the time uh, and then have a real problem in trying to, uh, uh, to get everything in. So what I'm going to do is you actually all have in your, um, uh, at your seats, you have a full biography of all of them. And I will skimp on that and do them the dishonor of not actually mentioning their entire careers, uh, but just simply uh, go over some of the highlights. Um, uh, so uh, Ken Edelman uh, has had a long career as a diplomat, as an author. Uh, he's a former ambassador to the UN uh, and former uh, director of the uh, Arms Control Disarmament Agency, the author of numerous books, one of which you have at your table, uh, including a fantastic one that I think my personal favorite on Shakespeare, uh, which is not necessarily what you would uh, <laughs> expect uh, US diplomats to write about. Um, Paula Dobriansky uh, is a, a distinguished scholar and policy wonk and uh, public servant. Uh, she's now a senior fellow at Harvard uh, at the Belfer Center for Science and International Affairs. Uh, and she is a former US ambassador and a former undersecretary of state uh, for democracy and global, uh, democracy and global affairs. Uh, Bob Hormatz has done just about everything, as far as I can see. Uh, he's now vice chairman of Kissinger and Associates uh, and a former undersecretary of state for economic growth, energy, and the environment along with uh, many other positions along the way. And Walter Russell Mead is about as uh, distinguished and wide-ranging a public intellectual as exists in the US at this point. Uh, he also, of course, the highlight of his career is, is he is the uh, American politics reviewer for foreign affairs uh, and a frequent <laughs> author on our pages. Uh, but he is the James Clark Chase Professor of Foreign Affairs and the Humanities at Bard and a true polymath. Um, and we uh, are, uh, oh, sorry, and Frank Wisner. Frank, Frank Wisner, uh, who is now at uh, uh, Squire, Patton, and Boggs, uh, basically was the ambassador to essentially the United States to half the world, uh, or at least half the world's population uh, at different times, um, in including countries such as uh, Zambia, Egypt, the Philippines, and India. Uh, he has represented the United States in lots of tricky situations and is a, a master. I remember when I was actually at Peon in Washington, uh, I asked somebody, uh, one of the more senior officials I was working with at the NSC, because uh, we had some communication from, uh, from Frank when he was ambassador in India, and this guy, who later went on to be an ambassador himself, said, Frank is the kind of person, he could be ambassador to any country in the world, and he could run any department in the US government if they would just let him. He's that kind of public <laughs> servant, uh, which I thought was over the top, but quite fun. And then I realized it was actually true, so you never know. Uh, 
So let me just shut up now and throw to you guys uh, a simple question. We'll have a few of these and then we'll throw it open for some Q&A. Uh, the first would be about diplomacy itself in a pretty general way. So we know that countries have interests and we know that countries have various power resources and we know that countries have domestic political systems. And frankly, we know the countries have leaders with their own preferences, personalities, temperaments, and so forth. So given all those things that shape policy, power, interest, domestic politics, the leadership in charge politically, what, if anything, is the role or the value added of the diplomat? Are you guys uh, and the diplomats in the room and, and in the world at large simply the vehicles or the carriers for those intersecting interests, or is there some independent value added? Would it matter if Bob Hormatz was replaced in a diplomatic position by you know, his cousin Joe Hormatz, or if Paula was you know, replaced as <laughs> a policymaker by her aunt Melissa, or whatever? I, 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 does, what does the diplomat do that is different from or added to all those other forces that drive policy. A, and, and, how, and if anything, how has that changed over the years or over time? So let me, with that, let me throw it open to you guys for a brief introductory thing, and then we'll get some more. Bye. 